On July 4, 1776, the Continental Congress formally adopted the Declaration of Independence. Recently, two men with ties to one of our forefathers addressed the fifth annual dinner of the Bold Gold Broadcast and Media Foundation. While Alexander Hamilton did not sign the Declaration of Independence, he did play a major role in the framing of the Constitution. Douglas Hamilton is his fifth great-grandson, and Dr. Stephen Knott is a leading author and scholar on Hamilton. Our Lisa Sugar talked with them about history, past and present. Now you are a National Hamilton Scholar, so how did you get to this point and why the interest in Alexander Hamilton? Well, I've always been interested in the American presidency, and even though Alexander Hamilton was not a president, he was so influential in the first presidency of George Washington that that's where my interest began. And the more I dug into Hamilton, the more I realized that not only did he help to shape and create the office of the presidency, but he had an incredible impact on the judiciary as well, but also on the entire American economic system. The fact that the United States is the number one world economy, we owe a great deal to Alexander Hamilton for that. Now you've written a book about the relationship between the two, a best-selling book, Washington and Hamilton, The Alliance That Forged America. Tell us about your book and why you wrote it. Well, I wrote it again to just uh, convey to folks, to convey to our, my fellow citizens the importance of this relationship between Washington and Hamilton. Believe it or not, it tends to get overshadowed, I think, by the relationship between Thomas Jefferson and James Madison or Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. My argument is that Hamilton and Washington deserve far more credit for creating the United States of America and for launching that, uh, our country on the path to superpower status. So that's the reason I wrote the book. Um, and it's done very well thanks to the musical that Lin-Manuel Miranda has put together. I was just going to say, you must have been thrilled when that very debuted. Thrilled. Very thrilled, yes. My book has benefited greatly from that. But in all seriousness, uh, Miranda helped, uh, I think, keep Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill. And more importantly, made Hamilton a figure, a real figure in the minds of particularly younger people who might not normally have heard about him. What would you think that Alexander Hamilton would say if he was living today? <laughs> I think he'd be very proud of the American economy. I think he'd be very proud uh, that we're a military superpower. Um, and he'd just be proud that the American people think of themselves as Americans. One of the challenges that both Washington and Hamilton faced was to convince their fellow citizens to stop thinking of themselves as New Yorkers or Virginians and begin to develop an American identity. And I credit Washington and Hamilton for creating that identity. Now, Mr. Douglas Hamilton, the fifth great-grandson of Alexander Hamilton. When did you find out that he was your relative, or did you know all along? Well, I, I found out probably when I was eight or nine years old. Uh, my grandmother was taking care of us, and uh, she brought me a coloring book that had a picture of Washington and Hamilton on it. And, uh, you know, I'm coming along and she says, yeah, you, you know who this is? And I had no idea. And so she pointed out George Washington. She says, well, you know, your birthday is on the same day as George Washington's birthday, February 22nd. And she says, and Alexander Hamilton is your uh, fifth great grandfather. So she explained a little bit about the relationship. Over the next three days, we sat down and put together a family tree. So it was mostly from a genealogy perspective is where I picked it up. But that was 60 years ago. Wow. In this world of DNA tests and Ancestry.com, has that helped you to research even more? Well, you know, that's a very interesting question. Uh, in 2004, I was asked to take a DNA test uh, to help better understand if Alexander Hamilton's father was truly Alexander Hamilton's father. And so my DNA came out very close to the Hamiltons, but some of that DNA, some of our family broke off of that family uh, 700 years ago. And so we're not as close as they'd like us to be, but you know, we feel pretty comfortable that when you, when it advances, when the science advances a little bit more, that it will show that we are Hamiltons. What has fascinated you the most about his history? Well, you know, the, the fact that he came from such a, a, a poor island in his surroundings and, um, and you know, he, he wrote this letter, you know, when he's just a teenager, said, you know, you know, I'm willing to risk my life, though not my character, to advance my station. And, you know, for a young man like that to have that idea that his character was very important and that he was going to make something of himself, uh, that he put together this plan at such a young age and he carried through with it. Last question, do you have any artifacts from your 
distant relative? Yes, I have, um, as the eldest son of the eldest son of the eldest son, uh, a, uh, an article gets passed down, it's called the, the, the Badge of Cincinnati. And it was a badge that George Washington gave Alexander Hamilton after the war. Um, the badge is from uh, part of an organization called the Society of Cincinnati. So I have the badge. I also have the mourning ring that Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton wore for 50 years um, uh, with a, a lock of her husband's hair in it. Uh, I have a baby dress that was made by her and I have a handkerchief. Uh, currently they're on exhibit at the uh, Museum of the American Revolution in Philadelphia.